Okay, yeah. we're live? Yep. Can you tell? Yeah. Yep. Okay, yeah. great. Well, welcome to everybody out in Facebook land. And welcome to all you guys here. And it's really, really great to have you here. And the first thing, of course, we do is we take care of some of the preliminaries. And one of the preliminaries is if you guys have something that Good looks morning. like this. Good morning. Please, please take your phones and put them on mute or stun or vibrate or whatever you got. And, and if you just take care of that now, then we'll get that out of the way. All right. Now, number two is we are a mastermind. What's the word, guys? Mastermind. Thank you. We're a mastermind. And who can give me a definition of a mastermind? Randy, you've been away for a while. You still remember all this stuff? It's a group of two or more people coming together in the spirit of harmony. There you go. That's right. And what happens, what happens when, we, when we have a mastermind, by the way, I believe that the best thing all of us can be doing all day long is finding people where we can get into harmony and brainstorm together, otherwise known as masterminding. How many would agree with that? Great. Right? Great. And, and really, that's what I do almost all day long now at my office, is, is I meet other business people, thanks to LinkedIn, and they say, yeah, I'd love to see how we could collaborate together. And they come down to my offices, and we'll spend an hour or two, or maybe even three, masterminding. All of these people know the difference between selling and networking. How many think there's a difference between selling and networking? Oh, yeah. Right? And really, how many of you would, would agree that your, your network is important to you? How many would agree? Why, why is our, is that true for some of us or all of us? All of us. How many would agree that every single person here in this room, that, that having a great network is valuable to them? It's an asset. What's the word? Asset. Okay, it's an asset. It's an intangible asset, but nevertheless, I'm a CPA. On a balance sheet, there's this asset called goodwill. Anybody ever heard of this thing called goodwill? <laughs> and very often, that goodwill is worth millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars. Because you know what? If I, Randy, if I sell you my business, and I have 500 influencers that are all loving this business and loving this product, is there a value that you don't have to find these 500 influencers when you buy the business? They're all immediately at your disposal. Is there a value to that? Yeah. 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 Agree. There's a value to that. Of course. They know what? People who become millionaires and lose their money and they get it back, very often it's because of not what they know, it's more because of who they know. How many would agree? Yeah. Right? And not only who they know, but who knows them, right? It's important that they know that if Randy said, geez, I need a half a million dollars to start this project. I got 20 people I can call that if they, if they see my name on their phone, they'll answer it. How many would like to have that? Yeah. That's called a network. What's it called? Network. Network. Yeah, it's called a network. And so the more you collaborate with other people, not only do you gain access to their network, but you also gain access to their knowledge and their experience and what's worked and what hasn't worked. Very true. Good morning, guys. Welcome, welcome. Right? Isn't that true? I'm going to agree. Okay, so, so, so the word is synergy. What's the word, guys? Synergy. Come on, twice as loud. Synergy. synergy. And who can give me a really good definition of synergy? Because if you understand synergy, you're, you are miles ahead of 98% of all the people on the planet. Who can give me a good definition of what the word synergy means? The sum and the whole are greater than the the number of the equal of uh, the, the individual, individual parts. parts. Right. So in other words, with synergy, one plus one doesn't equal two. One plus one equals three. Because isn't it true that if let's say for example Tim and I sat down and I said Tim, let's spend an hour thinking about how we can come up with a million dollar idea. And I said, you know, you're really creative in this whole area here. I was thinking, I know some people that if you could create this, then I thought I could go to all these people and they would gladly market it. He said, oh, if they could market that, I have some other ideas that they could probably market as well. And oh, no kidding, because you know what? I know other people that would love to market some of that stuff as well. And between the two of us, we come up with an idea that neither one of us on our own would have ever come up with. True, true. Yeah. Is there value in that? Yeah. Yeah. See, this, this is like, this is where synergy takes, takes you and you leverage. What's the word? Leverage. Yeah, you leverage the minds of other people for everybody's benefit. If everybody wins, then you think they're happy to give, share their knowledge and their information and their connections with you? Yeah. And we agree. Yeah. Okay. So to me, I mean, 
That's why, to me, networking is so important. It gives you the opportunity, if they're open, and the key word is? Open. open. Yeah, to, to really learning how to network properly and say, how can you and I sit down together and over the next hour or two or three, come up with something that's going to be phenomenal for the both of us? Would you, would you be interested in that? Yeah. Sure. How many people do you think that you, if you ask that question, would say sure? Yeah, everybody. Not everybody, but you know what? You ask enough of them and they say sure. Now, every day I meet with people who say, sure, at my office, they're all business owners, they're all entrepreneurs, right? They're all founders of companies, or they're in sales. Now, what kinds of people would you like to be doing business with? Yeah. <laughs> and now they come to my office every day, and I get to talk to them, and I get to mastermind with them. And together here, that's what we are. We are a mastermind. Now, how many think masterminding is important? And I'm going to tell you, Napoleon Hill wrote in the book, Think and Grow Rich, he said there were 13. How many? 13. Yeah, I don't know why I put down four, because there's actually 13. <laughs> <laughs> there are 13 principles in his philosophy of success. Now, he had a philosophy. What's the word? Philosophy. A philosophy. And the philosophy is made up of principles. So what's a philosophy made up of? Principles. Principle. Yeah, and in his philosophy of success, there were 13. How many? 13. Thank you. 13 principles, right? One of those 13 principles that he said, you must, it's non-negotiable. If you're going to buy my philosophy, you have to buy all 13 of the principles. You don't get to pick and choose. You guys understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. One of the things he wrote in Think and Grow Rich is, you must mastermind. It needs to be in your DNA. If you don't believe me, go and look up the... Go and look up Think and Grow Rich right now, and I believe masterminding is 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 uh, principle number eight. It's either eight or nine. I'm I'm getting them mixed up right now. But I guarantee you, he's telling you in the book you need to mastermind with like-minded people that want to get to the same common objective. You want to become financially free? Yeah. Do I want to become financially free? Yeah. Do you think we have a better chance of both of us succeeding if we collaborate together? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, well, why, why is everybody like an island on their own trying to figure it all out on their own? That's a million times harder. True or true? true. Yes. And, and that, that's why I, 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 I applaud you guys for showing up on Tuesday mornings. And if you live in Phoenix, really, there's no excuse not to be here. If you're not in Phoenix, hey, you know what? Tune in, right? <laughs> but, but the problem is, is that most people are not, they've read the book. How many of you guys have read Think It's More Rich? You've never read the book? Not yet. Oh, not yet? Okay, but you will, right? I own it, yeah. Okay, you own it? Yeah. Okay, well, it's one thing to own it, it's a whole different thing to read it. <laughs> By the way, there's a whole, it's a, there's a total difference between reading something and studying something. How many would agree? Get the right? work I mean, To really, you know, because I mean, I know lots of people who have read Think and Grow Rich, and then they read it and they put it on the bookshelf and they said, I read it. Now, is, uh, how much are you going to get out of reading a book like Think and Grow Rich once? What do you think? Not much. Not you're going to remember it was a great book. Are you going to remember anything in the book? No. no you're not going to. You're going to remember you read it, but it just buried it with a with a sea of other information. Because one of the keys. How many guys really want to become financially free? And how would like how many of you would like to do it quickly? Yeah. yeah so then the, the, the you know what the one of the most important things you're going to need to learn is repetition is the mother of learning. Let me hear you guys say that. Repetition, repetition is the mother of learning. You have to. Repeat things. You have to hear stuff repeatedly again and again and again and again. To hear it once would be like to plant a seed and never bother fertilizing it and watering it. You guys understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. Every day you need to nurture that seed. Randy, what's going on, my friend? Any, anything exciting going on? Oh, right Mitch Kaufman is hey, on. Hey, Mitch! And Belen. Okay. Oh, Belen. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Oh, we miss you guys. You should be here for crying out loud, right? All right, very good. Okay, so, all right, so let's let's get going here. So, how many of you guys would actually like to have a whole lot more money in your life? Can you show hands? Great. How many would like to have a whole lot more happiness in your life? Who would like to have a whole lot more both? Good. Well, you're at the right place. Tuesday mornings with Jeff, and the first thing I do, you know, we have a we have a ritual. You guys know what Woody Allen made the the expression famous, and it's really true. 80% of all success is just 
Yeah, absolutely. So if you would please just reach around and pat both your neighbors on the back. Speak of the, there they are. We're not tired. So reach around, pat both your neighbors on the back and say congratulations for showing up. Okay, all right. Good job, everybody. Good job. Okay. So anytime I do any speaking or any training, I always have two rules. How many rules do I have, guys? Two. Thank you. Two rules. The first rule is this. Don't believe a word I say. Why do I always, always, always remind every single one of you guys every single week? In fact, I don't just do this. I do this in all of my trainings. Why do you think I would remind you not to believe a word I say? Why? Because it's only your own experiences. Yeah, I'm, I can only come from my own experiences. It doesn't make them true. It doesn't make them false. It doesn't make them right. And it doesn't make them wrong. They just make them what? My experiences. Isn't that true? Yeah. yeah. yeah but whose experience is important here today? Mine. Oh. Yeah, your experience is everything, right? Isn't that true? How many would agree? Mm -hmm. Right? So all I can tell you is that the principles and ideas that we're going to be sharing today have transformed my life. And they've now transformed the lives of literally thousands and thousands and thousands. thousands. Thank you, thousands of other people. And if you learn them, and, and much more importantly, if you use them, I believe your life is going to be transformed too. How many of you guys would like to have your life transformed? Yeah. See, I, to me, that's what it's all about. Anything less than that is a waste of our time. Sure, true. Sure. Sure. How many of you guys are really into really transforming your life? Okay, that, and I applaud you. Give, you. give your neighbor a high five, say you're awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. Brian Ponciano. Hey, there we go. He's awesome too. Brian, you're awesome. In fact, were, all of you guys are awesome. Okay. So, okay, so all I can ask is that you guys for the next 90 minutes, and how long do we have? Yeah, 90, 90 precious minutes. And by the way, let's give it up for Corey, our host. Come on, guys. Hey, Corey. the greatest guy on the planet. I mean, we are, first of all, we love Corey, but every single week he puts out bagels, he puts out fruit, he puts up all kinds of stuff. So if you're here in the valley, I mean, come on, there's really no excuse to be here. There's a certain energy. Look at this, guys. Look at all the beautiful walks and cream cheese and bagels. Oh my God. So, you know, so, you know what? There's a certain vibration and a certain energy that you only get when you're surrounded by other like-minded people. How many would agree? Yeah. It's not the same, when you're watching this at home, it's not at all the same thing when you're with a group of people that are all vibrating at a high frequency. How many of you guys would agree with that, right? There's a real, real value in connecting with people, not virtually, but in, like, in flesh and blood. How many would agree? Yes. Right? So to me, I, I, I say that, you know, if you're, those of you guys, first of all, you guys are totally awesome for showing up and, and for coming here at 8 o'clock in the morning and fighting the rush, the traffic in the morning. So trust me, I totally, totally, totally appreciate it. And I, my, my intention is to make sure that, especially for you guys that, that are investing your time, your gas, your car, your energy to come here, that you get the very, 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 very best out of what we have going on here this morning, that you get the most out of it. So let me ask you guys something. I have two rules. The second rule is, is this. How many of you guys want to get the very, very most out of your time here today? Great. That's what I'm hoping. And how many of you guys would like to learn faster? Wonderful. And how many would like to remember more of what you learned? Terrific. And research indicates the key to that is what? Participation. Participation. Yeah. participation and involvement. Absolutely. It's a proven fact that the more we participate, you know, there's an expression. What I hear, I forget. What I see, I remember. What I do, I understand. So I want you guys to say this with me. What I, I hear, I forget. I what I, I see, see, I remember. remember. What I do, I understand. How many believe that's true? Yeah. Okay. That's why I feel so extremely blessed that when, when I got my training on, on how to speak and how to train and how to coach and how to mentor, my mentor was Harv Ecker. And Harv truly, honestly believed that there's a million times more value in having you do stuff than him talk. How many would agree? When, when, when are you actually going to learn how to do anything? When you're sitting
sitting listening to somebody or when you're actually doing it? Doing it. When you're doing it, right? Talking about it and doing it are two totally different things. Isn't that true? Okay. If you want to learn how to swim, we can spend hours in a classroom talking about all the different strokes and everything. Greetings, 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 welcome. But when are you actually going to learn how to swim? When? When you get in the water. Yeah, until you get in the water, you can read every book there is on swimming. You can pass every test there is on swimming, but do you really know how to swim? No. If you can read every book there is on playing the piano, when are you actually going to learn how to play the piano? When you're what? Yeah, if you want to learn a language, are you going to learn it by reading about it, or are you going to learn by speaking it and doing it? Yeah, everything in life that you want to get good at, guess what? To begin with, you weren't. True or true? Yeah. yeah, even walking. Isn't it true that when you first started walking, you fell down a million times before you could finally walk? True or true? Yeah, yeah but I mean, if you stay with it long enough, well, hopefully, right? right? If you, but if you stay with it long enough, isn't it true that pretty much anything that you would want to put your time and effort into over time, you could learn to become good at it? How many would agree? Yeah. Okay, so what I would suggest to all of you guys, of all, of all the things you could get good at, get good at growing yourself. That is the single most valuable thing you could get good at. Get good at growing yourself. Get good at growing your mind. Get great at learning. Have an open mind and be very, very selective about the information you choose to put in your mind. How many think that's a good idea? Okay, so the word is to be discerning. What's the word? Discerning. Yeah, discerning. And I always like to talk about a story, and I haven't told you guys this story in a long, long time. But, Joey, so great to see you. How many of you guys know Greg Reed? Anybody know Greg Reed? So Greg Reed is like, he's a best-selling author. He wrote, uh, he's written a couple of books with Sharon Lecter, maybe even three now, I've lost track. And just, they're just about to release another one. Yeah, that's what I mean, exactly. And, 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 and Greg wrote, uh, and Sharon wrote, Three Feet from Gold. And his, his, he has, uh, once or twice a year, he has an event in, in the San Diego area called Secret Knock, which is considered to be among the most elite, phenomenal, three-day event that you could just imagine. You're surrounded by billionaires, and, and Greg's a very kind of off-the-wall kind of guy. I mean, I'm super dressed up compared to Greg. You should see how he dresses. He's a totally off-the-wall kind of guy, but the three days are just like absolutely, unbelievably incredible. And why was, why did I bring up Greg Reed? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, no, absolutely. Well, 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 do you guys remember what I was talking about just before, before uh, I, 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 I brought up Greg Get great at learning. learning. What's that? Get, Get great, great at learning. Get, yeah, Greg, Greg Reed told a story at Secret Knock. He said this. He says, you know what? How many of you guys should, should, should be, should be uh, not only uh, generous givers, but also great receivers? How many yes. would agree? Okay. Now, sometimes what you're going to be receiving is garbage. It's crap, yeah. right? So you know the way the way Greg did it, and I and I love the way Greg tells the story. Is throughout the day, you have your hands reached out, and you're gladly accepting whatever the universe is giving you, right? But notice how my fingers are spread. You guys see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. And what happens is is that if you're willing to be open, and you're willing to live in a, an, a, an energy of gratitude and you're willing to be in, in constantly in receiving mode, then uh, throughout the day, positive thoughts and positive energy will pass through you, and it's all negative stuff. True or true? True. true. But, you know, if you're intuitive enough, at the end of the day, all the negative and all the crap has slipped through the fingers, and the only thing left in the palm of your hand is all the jewels and all the gold you received that day. Mm. You guys got what I just said? Yeah. How do you think that, that, that pretty much how you should live your life? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And really, if you come from that attitude of gratitude, and you're willing to be open to receiving, and understand that some of the energy that people are giving you is just negative energy, are you under any obligation to accept their negative energy, or can you just let it slide through your fingers? Let it down. Can you just let it slide through your fingers? Yep. Yeah, you don't have to put any negative energy into it. You don't have to reach back to them in a negative way. You just let it slip through your fingers, true or true? And at the end of the day, how many would agree that if you set the intention that at the end of the day, when you look at that palm in your hand, you're going to see jewels? Because every day is there an opportunity for you to, to get finer new jewels in your life? How many would agree? Yeah. Right. And, and see, to me, I believe that if you're open for the 90 minutes that we're here together, and you're truly open, we're not going to throw a lot of BS at you. 
What, what, what I share with you guys are universal principles that have been taught for thousands of years. They're proven to work. Whether they're going to work for you or not, that remains to be seen. But do they, it, it, it's kind of like the law of gravity. Whether you're a good person or a bad person, you jump off a bridge, what's going to happen? <laughs> you're going to fall down. You're going down, right? <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're good or bad. The law is the law. True or true? True. Right? Okay. So, you know, what, uh, what we talk about are universal laws. What are they called? Universal laws. Yeah, universal laws. Universal laws. So how many of you guys want to participate 100%? Yeah. Great. Anybody not? Okay, well, we're going to find out, aren't we? Okay. All right. And just for the record, how many of you guys wouldn't raise your hands no matter what I asked you? Come on, then. Okay, 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 good. How many of you guys want to have some fun? Yeah. All right, good, good. Okay, so what we want to do before we really get started, we, I, I'm a big believer in declarations. What's the word, guys? Declaration. Yeah, and who can tell me what a declaration is? What's a declaration? Statement of action. It's a statement of action, yeah, it could be, yeah, it could be a statement of action, it doesn't necessarily have to be a statement of action, but who else wants that, does anybody want to, go ahead, Randy. It's, a, it's an idea that you send out into the universe, and it also goes to your subconscious, and it's a statement of action. Okay, so uh, again, um, it, it, I'm not necessarily sure that all the declarations we do is a statement of action, it's certainly a statement of intention. I That's what I mean, right? yeah. So, it, so a declaration is a statement we say out loud. Otherwise, it's not a declaration. If you're saying it in your head, you're not saying it out loud, you're not declaring it. True or true? true. Now, is there a difference between thinking something and speaking something? Yes. Yes. What's the difference? It's a vibration. It's a totally different vibration, a thought versus a, a spoken word. True or true? true. Right? You're, you're, you're taking your thoughts and you're translating it into something that's tangible. Is a, thought, is, a, is, is a sound tangible? Can you hear it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, it is. Is a thought tangible? No, not unless you're tele telepathic or something and you can read other people's thoughts, right? Okay, so a declaration is a statement we say out loud. And we set an intention with that statement and we put it out there into the universe. Now, is everything energy? Yes. Yes. How many believe everything is energy? Everything. So when you make that statement out loud, does it have a certain unique energy of its own? Yes. It has its own unique frequency vibration. Isn't that true? Yes. Okay, now you're putting it out there into the universe. Isn't that true? Yes. Now, not only are you putting it into the universe, but at the subconscious level, are you also hearing exactly what you put out? Yes. Yes, okay. And where does all permanent change happen in your life? At the conscious level or the subconscious level? Subconscious. The subconscious level. So who do you need to constantly be retraining, reprogramming, reconditioning? Your subconscious mind. True or true? True. Okay. Now, on top of it, if you put your hand on your chest while you're actually speaking the words, you can actually feel the physical vibration of those words throughout the cells of your body. True or true? True. Now, do you think that's important? Yeah. Yeah. How many think that? Did you know that you're not made up of nothing more than, than billions of cells? Raise your hand if you believe that's true. Do, do those cells, the same cells you were born with, do you have those exact same cells your entire life? No. No, no those cells go through li born, living, growing old, dying, being replaced by new cells. True or true? true. Did you know, like, I think it's every month, all the skin on our body dies. That's why they say, like, after six years, you better change your mattress or something, because there's tons of dead cells. Isn't that true? Yeah. Raise your hand if you believe that's true. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, what's happening inside those cells? They have DNA. What do they have? DNA. Yeah, they, and they say, well, this is the way it is, and they pass it on to the next cell, so the next cell knows automatically the way it is. True or true? True. So, let's say in your DNA, I'll give you an example. Let's say in your DNA, you were taught that it takes money to make money. Raise your hand if you've ever heard that expression. Raise your hand if you believe that's true. Nope. Raise your hand if you think there's a lot of people that absolutely positively believe that's true. Yeah. And since they don't have any money, what's the sense in trying to make a lot of money? Because it takes money to make money. True or true? true? That's why I know most people that I know never even start marketing. Because they don't have any money because they think it takes, you know, that I got I to, and they don't market. If you don't market, you know how much business you're going to get? Zero. Yeah, absolutely. But if you believe it takes money to make money, then guess in your DNA, every single time a cell in your body dies and is replaced by a fresh new cell, 
Guess what message is being passed passed along? Take money and make money. Yeah. Now, what if over the next 30 days, you kept reminding your subconscious mind, don't take money to make money. It takes creativity to make money. Right? Yeah. I've got a great idea, Randy. All we need is $20,000 to make this thing happen, man. It's going to be fantastic. And Randy <laughs> looks at me and says, I'll cut you for 50%. And Randy says, that's a good idea. Okay, I came up with an idea that I had no money. Now suddenly I'm going to get 50% of millions of dollars because I found I was creative enough to find somebody who had the money. Sure, sure. sure. Right? But what did my buddy Hard Becker do? He wanted to start a business. He had no money. What did he do? He borrowed $2,000 off his credit card. Oh. Right? So if it does take money to make money, does it need to be your money? No. No, it doesn't need to be your money at all. You know what? People, people who have money are looking for people who have great ideas. Because they got the money, but they don't have the idea. True or true? Yeah. If you have a great idea, I guarantee you, if you, it's a really a great idea, and you really believe it, and you thought it through, and you let people know, I have something that's going to be phenomenal, I guarantee you, you talk to enough people, you will find someone who will say, Let me in. Yeah. And how many people do you need to find? One. Just one. Period. End of story. That's why I say for every single person in this room, there's no limit to what you're capable of achieving in the next 12 to 24 months. How many would agree? Right? So, the one thing I like to remind you guys is if you want to make a lot of money in a short period of time, it takes three things. How many? Three. three. Thank you. Three things. It takes our V, our K, and our Y, and that's our triangle here, and that's actually the logo. And before we do that, we're going to do our declarations because I got so excited I forgot about it. Right. Oh. So, so if you do have your declarations, palm out. If you don't, watch, find somebody to share them with, um, and and so that we can all do our declarations. So how many of you guys don't have the declarations? How many of you guys do? Okay, so for, if you do. Keep your hand up in the air. Find, so if you don't, find someone whose hand is up in the air and you can go stand next to that person. All right? And on the count of three, well, so we're going to do this declaration. And we're we're going we're gonna to stand up with some energy. Please, everybody sit down. Because that was pretty feeble. Okay? All right? Everything is, hey, how, how you do anything is how you do everything. How many would agree? Okay. okay. You do stuff half-assed in here. You know how you're going to do them out there? Half-assed. Yeah, I, I want you guys playing at 100% in here. Because if you can play at 100% in here, do you believe you can play at 100% out there? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so you get to practice. What's the word? Practice. practice. You get to practice playing at 100% right here while we're all together, right? I don't want you going home and practicing it. I want you actually to practice it right here. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, so on the count of three, let's all stand up with some energy. One, two, and three. Yeah. All right, you put your hands on your heart. And let's do our declaration. I commit to my personal development. Whatever I do, if I do it 100% or not at all. How I do anything is how I do everything. I say what I mean and I mean what I say. I choose financial freedom and the lifestyle it provides. My goal is to create passive income streams. I will master the skills and mindset of business. I will never quit until I succeed. I have a You have a million in your mind, buddy. Good to have you back. All right. We have our sign in sheet. Could, would everybody please be sure before you leave today to make sure that you sign the sign in sheet? Yes? Yes. yes. Hello? Yes? Yes. yes. All right, thank you. All right. And we're just going to hand this out here. Great. Okay. So, what I want to do right now is I want to quickly go through some of the stuff here, and then we're going to get into the wealth file on money management. But how many would agree that if, if you want, how many of you guys, again, let's start at the basics. Well, you, how many of you guys really want to become financially free quickly? Okay, so again, it takes three. How many? Three. Three, three critical components if your goal is to legitimately go from where you are to financially free in the next 12 to 24 months. How many of you guys would like to become financially free in the next 12 to 24 months? Okay, so <coughs> the first thing is RV, which stands for... Right. Right. Yeah. 
you have to be in a, a, an opportunity, a business of some sort, where you're offering some kind of a product or a service or whatever it is you're doing, where you could actually scale it up and become financially free in the next year or two. How many would agree that you have to be in the right vehicle? Right? If, so it has to be something that is in high demand. What are the two key words, guys? High demand. High demand. So who can give me a definition of high demand? What's it mean? Joey, you know what high demand means? Uh, something that wants, everybody wants. Well, that's a half of it. What's the other half? Go ahead, Jonathan. Something that everyone wants and they're willing to pay for it. Yeah, two key components, guys. What do you have or what can you find out there that lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of people, not only do they want it, but guess what? They're willing to pay for it. Yeah, is that important? Yes. Yeah, if everybody wants what you got, but nobody's willing to pay you for it, are you in the right vehicle? Yes. No, you got to find something to where you have both things going on at the same time. I want what you got, and whatever you're charging, I'm paying. Good or good? good. Okay, now do you think do you think those opportunities exist out there right now, or do you have to create it from scratch? Not one of you needs to create anything from scratch. All of these things are already existing out there. Greetings, greetings. They already exist out there, just waiting for you to find them. True or true? True. Now, do you think some of those, those systems, those business systems out there that are waiting for you to find them would totally resonate with you? They're, they're, they're the exact product that you love anyways, the exact industry, the exact niche. What they're selling is exactly what you'd love to be selling anyways, right? Because if you could create it, that's what you would create. And they've already created it. And now they say, Amy, become an affiliate, you'll pay you'll get 35% on all sales. Okay, now you got it. now, and Amy says, wow, once I figure out how to sell this in the Scottsdale area, I'm gonna form partnerships in 27 different cities, and I'm gonna have partners in each one of these cities, and I'll split my profits with all these cities, because once I got it figured out in Phoenix, it'll work everywhere. So did she find a business vehicle that's scalable? Yeah. yeah, could you find a business vehicle that's scalable? Yeah. yeah, you sure could, I'm telling you. Now, not only do you have to be in the right vehicle, you have to have the right knowledge. The right what? Knowledge. Yeah, you gotta know business skills, marketing skills. You need to know how, how to leverage. You need to have to leverage money. You need to have to learn how to leverage the media. You need to have to leverage your network, right? You have to learn how to leverage all this stuff. True or true? True. If you don't know, if you don't have this knowledge, you're not gonna do it in a year or two. You're not. The good news is you can learn it in a few weekends. How many think that's a good idea? Yeah. Right? That's part of what we're going to be offering at the 2% Club. Now, at the end of the day, you can be in a level 10 vehicle. Man, it is the greatest vehicle on the, on the planet. And you can have level 10 knowledge. You know all there is to know about your market, your product, the benefits, you name it. But you're a level 1 person. You're lazy, you quit easily, you get discouraged all the time, you sabotage yourself all day long. Now, if you're a level one person and you find a level 10 vehicle and you get the level 10 knowledge, but you're a level one person, what's gonna happen for you? Nothing. Level one results. You're gonna get level one results. How many would agree? Yes. It doesn't matter what vehicle you're in, it doesn't matter what knowledge you have, if you're a level one person, you're always gonna get what kind of results? So before you worry about the vehicle and the knowledge, what do you need to focus on first? Because until you're a winner, everything you get into, you're not going to win. You're programmed to lose. That's who you are. True or true? true. And all of us, I guarantee you, all of us are programmed to fail. We don't need anything to screw up in our lives because we'll screw it up for ourselves. True, true. Uh, because of our programming. What's the word? Programming. And each and every single one of us has been filtered and, and, and contaminated, unfortunately, with the information we got, especially when we were growing up. Not only was there some accurate information, but most of the information inside your head right now is contaminated with tons of lies. But you believe them to be true. So as long as they're true for you, are they true? Yes. Yeah. All of you guys are walking around with a shitload, pardon my language, of lies that you believe to be true. Because they've been part of who you are for so long, you don't know any difference. True or true? true. It's kind of like, how does a fish know it lives in water? 
How does a fish know it lives in water? When it gets out of water. Yeah, when it gets out of water. Oh, shit, where's all the water, right? Okay. And we don't realize how contaminated our mind is until we start doing a little bit of research and realizing that every single person in this room, including moi, I'm as guilty of it as everybody else, my mind is totally contaminated with all kinds of lies that absolutely will sabotage me every chance it gets. True or true? true. You know, a book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, that's where we talked about this whole this philosophy of success. He wrote that book in 1937. In 1938, the very next year, he wrote a book called Outwitting the Devil. It didn't get released until I think it was 2009 or 2010, Sharon Lecter. Uh, was, how many of you guys have read Outwitting the Devil? And, what, and, 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 and so the first book, was Think and Grow Rich, is all about this philosophy and principles for success. And the, the follow-up, which wasn't published for, uh, like, how many years? Like 70 years later, right? 70 some odd years later. What was Outwitting the Devil? Outwitting the Devil was basically saying, you can call the society the devil if you want. Because he, here's what, here's what, if you really wanted to call society the devil, here's what basically he said. The, devil, the society says, you know, at a young age, I'm going to introduce all these kids to things like tobacco. I'll get them addicted to tobacco. I'll get them addicted to alcohol. I'll get them addicted to sex. I'll get them addicted to money. I'll get them addicted to so many bad habits that they're not ever going to be rational enough and intelligent enough to outwit me. And all their addictions to all these negative things, how many people you think are addicted to drugs, or tobacco, or alcohol, or sex, or a million other things that they're addicted to that don't bring anything positive into their life, but they're addicted to it, and it takes them off course. And he says, as the devil, I get to control all you guys because you're called drifters. What's the word? Drifters. Yeah, you have so many bad habits that clutter up your mind all day long. You procrastinate, you make excuses. Hey, that's not an accident. I programmed you be, to be that way. So that you're, you're, just, you're just under my control, under my command. True or true? True. Yeah, and by the time you're old enough to know any better, I already own your mind. True or true? true. He says there's only 2% of all the people that aren't drifters. Only 2% that outwit me. Only 2%. We should have a club for those guys. We should. <laughs> yes, we should. What should we call it? The 2% club? What do you think? Yeah, yeah. there you go. That's right. Because only 2% outwit the devil. Even though the devil threw tobacco at them, they didn't get addicted to it. You know, I, I lost my, my, my daughter last year, and, you know, God rest her soul, I love her to death. And I, I truly, truly believe that if she hadn't been a cigarette smoker all of her life, it would have made a huge difference. I, I, I spent many, many years in the life insurance industry, and I can tell you that when, when we do the mortality table, you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. You look at the mortality table for people that smoke tobacco versus people that don't. It's two totally sets of mortality tables. If you came in and you wanted life insurance and you were a smoker, man, I had to, I had to charge you for the same amount of insurance as I would charge a non-smoker, ton more. Because what did the statistics say? You're gonna die. You're gonna die. Sooner. Much sooner. You're gonna get diseases, you're gonna die, right? So how many people do you know that get sidetracked in their life because of all these negative habits that society threw at them? Right? We overspend, we overshop, we overeat, we overdrink, we over everything. And are any of these habits promoting us being happy, healthy, wealthy, spiritually wealthy people? No. And that's the devil doing its job. And I call the devil society, really. And, 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 and he says, I have lots of agents out there right, to make sure that things go bad for you. To make sure that I, I give you all kinds of, you know, terrible habits that you're just going to introduce you to, you know, your life's going good, oh, I'm going to create some little adultery in your life, let's see how your life is after that. <laughs> true or true? True. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's how it is, right? Okay, so, until you become the right you, you will never be successful. How many would agree? Of all the things you could focus on, do you think it's more important right now in your life to focus on the right vehicle, the right knowledge, or becoming the right you? Right you. And this is where we want to, this is where we separate ourselves from everybody else. How many would agree? Yeah. Because, you know, one of the things that I, I learned from my mentor, Hart, 
Clark Becker. Clark, Clark went to this guy called Robert Allen, right? Very good if you have heard of Robert Allen. If you haven't, he was back in the 80s, 90s, early 2000s. He was the king when it came to real estate. How many of you guys are in real estate? He wrote a book called Nothing Down. Anybody ever heard of that book, Nothing Down? It was how to buy real estate with Nothing Down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it became a New York Times bestseller. I, I bought the book when it first came out. I used his strategies. Then, about eight years later, about 1988, a book called Creating Wealth. Creating Wealth. Wow. Yeah. And by the 1990s, he had multiple streams of income. Multiple streams of income. income. Yeah, in fact, multiple streams of passive income. Right. Is there a difference? Yeah. 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 So, so, so um, he, was, he was the real estate guru. He would charge $5,000 to come to his event for a three-day weekend. He was going to teach all the secrets to getting rich in real estate. How many people you think are out there will be willing to spend five thousand dollars to go hear this guru and teach them how to get rich in real estate? You think a lot? Yeah. Yeah, a lot, right? Absolutely. So Parr went to Robert Allen and says, Well, what percentage of all the people that you're teaching actually you think get rich? What do you think he, Robert Allen said? Two percent. Not many, right? Yeah. I mean, there's no way there's right? but it's not many, right? So Harv said, well, do you think do you think you've given them the wrong vehicle? Real estate's not the right vehicle. Robert Allen says, No, what are you talking about? I made millions in real estate. I know it's the right vehicle. He says, Well, do you think that you're not giving them the right knowledge? He said, I'm giving them exactly what I did, exactly how I did it. I'm giving them. He says, Well, then there's only one thing left. Do you think do you think that they're that they, they're programmed to be successful? He says, Let's you and me partner together, Robert. You're great at this and this, I'm great at this. Until you're, uh, if the people that were coming to your event were level 10 people, you know what your, your, your success rate would be? Yeah. If, if they were level 10 people, if, if, if everybody that came to your seminars was programmed to be successful, to do what successful people do, to act in spite of their fears, if, if, you, if you had a room full of level 10 people, what do you think would happen to the results of your members? Your students? Level 10. But that's not your specialty, Robert. Your specialty isn't turning people into level 10. Your specialty is showing them how to get rich in real estate. Well, how many other people could show you how to get rich in all these different things, but none of them are teaching you how to get, get to become a level 10 person? And that's where Art says, that's where I come in. That's where I come in. Because if you want to be successful at anything, and by the way, how many of you believe you could become financially free in the next one or two years if you were the right person? If you were the right person. What's the word? Person. Yeah, you have to be the right person. It's not your mentors. It's not your teachers. It's not the seminars you go to. It's accumulation of, of, of all of that stuff that you're doing. But at the end of the day, the buck stops with right you. It stops with you, right? Okay, so I hope you really get this. Now, Real, real quickly, you know, we have this thing called the tree of life. life. Yeah, the tree of life. And, and, and as you guys know, in the tree of life, and I want to be careful here on time, I want to make sure we have time to do the, the, the well talk. But in the tree of life, let's say the tree of life represents us and, and, and the fruit, these little things that I put on here, these are fruits. What are they? Fruits. fruits. The fruits represent the, the results that we're getting in our life, right? Those are called our fruits, right? All the things we have around us. And when most people look at their fruits, the results that they're getting in their life, you know, do you think most people are happy with them, or do you think most people are, are very unhappy with the fruits that they have in their life right now? Unhappy, unhappy you know. Oh, how many people do you think are probably only reaching like 10% of their potential? Maybe even less, right? Most people barely scratch the surface. So, well, here's what happens is everybody is so laser locked in on these fruits you know, they're too small, they don't taste good, there's not enough of them. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. And we put all of our attention on, on, on these lousy fruits. Except for one particular thing, what is it that produces these particular fruits? The roots. The roots. The roots and the seeds produce those fruits. Isn't that true? Yeah. It's what's under the ground that creates what's above the ground. True. It's what's invisible that creates what's visible. True. It's what's intangible that creates the tangible. True, true. true. Now, is this true in nature some of the time or all the time? All, all the time. All the time. In fact, in every orchard, in every forest, in every field, 
Isn't it true that what's under the, cra under the ground creates what's above the ground? How many yes. would agree that's true? Yes. So how many would agree this is always true in, in nature? How many would agree? Are you a part of nature? Yes. So should it be true for you as well? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. It should be true for you as well. And because of that, you need to understand this very, very, very important concept. We do not live in one realm alone. We live in four. How many? Four. How many? Four. four. Okay, we live in four realms at the same time. And we could be vibrating on different frequencies in each one of these realms. The first realm is the mental realm. That's all about our thinking. How many guys know what I'm talking about? Emotional realm. What's the realm? Emotional. Yeah, that's all about what, what I'm feeling, right? What we're feeling at the moment. Spiritual realm. What's the word? Spiritual. Yeah, absolutely. That's the vibration on that. And the physical realm, everything we hear, see, taste, touch, smell. Have I used, have I take, used up all of our five consciousness? Right? So our, the clothes we wear, our bank accounts, our income, the car we drive, the home we live in, everything that's physical. You guys understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. Now, what, what most people get, never, ever get their entire lifetime. Ever. And if you take nothing away from what you're training here today but this one lesson, is that your physical world, the amount of money you actually have, the house you live in, the car, all that stuff is nothing more than a printout, what's the word? Yeah. Yeah. Of what's going on in these three areas. These are the fruits, but these are the roots that create these fruits. How many understand what I just said, right? This is what's above the ground. This is what's below the ground. This is what this is what's visible. This is what's invisible. Nothing happens in the physical world until it first happens in these three areas first. You guys understand what I'm talking about? Yes. Yeah. Therefore, you must understand that money is a result. Money is a what? Result. Wealth is a result. Health is a result. Illness is a result. Your weight is a result. Oh, thank you. We live in the world of cause and effect. Yeah. yeah, how many of you guys ever heard someone ever say something like, well, a lack of money is kind of a bit of a problem? Yeah. Anybody ever, and how many of you know that person intimately? Yeah, yeah absolutely, you're right, exactly. Right. Now hear this. A lack of money is never, ever, 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 ever a problem. A lack of money is merely a symptom. What's the word? Symptom. Come on, twice as loud. Symptom. Of what's going on underneath. Lack of money is the result. What are the root causes? Therefore, the only way, which way? Only. To permanently change your outer world is to first change your inner world. How many would agree with that? Okay, that's what we do. That's what we work on. That's what we focus on. Because until you change your inner world, you will never change your outer world. How many of you agree with me on that? Okay, so you know what? Let's put a little bit of energy behind that. Let's do a declaration. So let's stand up on three. One, two, and three. Woo! Okay, put your hand on your chest. Come on, your chest, not her chest. Okay, and repeat after me. My inner world creates my outer world. Let me hear you. My inner world creates my outer world. Again, please. My inner world creates my outer world. Okay, one more time, twice as loud. My inner world creates my outer world. Okay, turn to both your neighbors, look them in the eye, give them a high five, say, you have a mean there, mine. You have a mean there, mine. You have a mean there, mine. You have a mean Okay, have a seat, guys. All right, have, have a seat. Guys, have a seat. Okay, so real quickly, real, 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 real quickly. I want to I want to remind you guys about something called the process of manifestation. Come on, twice as loud. Process of manifestation. Process of manifestation. Is that is it important that you totally understand this process? Yeah. Yes. I think it is. Most people don't understand this process. They don't get it at all. If you're going to make permanent change, you need to understand it. Okay. So the process of manifestation says our thoughts lead to our feelings, lead to our actions, lead to our results. So let me hear you say it. Thoughts, thoughts lead to feelings, lead to actions, actions, lead to our results. Okay, one more time, twice as loud. Our thoughts lead to feelings, lead to actions, lead to results. Okay, now thoughts and feelings, are they part of the inner world or the outer world? Inner world. Yeah. Yeah. Results, are they part of the inner world or the outer world? Outer oh. world. Yeah. Therefore, action, what's the word? Action. Action is the bridge. What's the word? Bridge. bridge. Yeah. Between the inner world and the outer world. And you 
guys have to understand that because action is key. What's key? Action. Action. Until you're prepared to start taking action, you can meditate all you want. You can say declarations all you want. You can dream all you want. You can imagine all you want. You can plan all you want. But until you start taking real action in the real world, you are not going to get real results. How many would agree? Now, you know what? I, you know, there's an exp you know, Harv made this expression famous. I truly believe it's true, and I use it myself. Give me five minutes with anyone, and I can pretty well predict your financial future for the rest of your life. How? Simple. It's easy. In five minutes, just by asking some simple, pointed questions, I can identify your money blueprint. Your money what? Blueprint. blueprint. Yeah. You, me, everybody in this room. Everybody in, in the state, in fact, in our country, in fact, in our society, and in every society, already has ingrained, what's the word? Ingrained. Already has ingrained inside of you a money blueprint. And it is this blueprint, what's the word? Blueprint. More than anything and everything else, all combined, that will determine your financial success. You can know everything there is to know about business, you can know everything there is to know about marketing. You can know everything there is to know about sales. You can know everything there is to know about investments. You can know every single real estate investment strategy on the planet. But if you're not already preset, and what's the word? Preset. For high levels of success, then nothing you learn, nothing you say, and nothing you do will make much of a difference for you. How many would agree? Right? And our thoughts and our feelings make up our blueprint. You guys understand that? Yes. yes. Our blueprint is made up of our thoughts and our feelings. Now, where do our thoughts come from? Our brain. Thank you. Yes. That's exactly where they come from. They come from the programming we received as kids growing up. Who were some of the people that gave us all this program? Mom. Our parents, our parents teachers, who else? Our teachers who else? TV. TV. Religious. Newspapers, yeah, our, our siblings, family, neighbors, yeah, we're absolutely, you bet. The culture, <laughs> let's take culture. Isn't it true that in some cultures they deal with money this way, in other cultures they deal with money this way? Isn't that true? Yeah. They come out of the womb doing money that way or were they taught how to do money? Uh, yeah, and so was I. Say, I was taught how to do money. I was taught how to do money. And I was as well. And unfortunately, most of the people that taught us about money either didn't have a lot of it, or they had a lot of issues around money. How many would agree? Oh, I agree. Right, so, so that's your blueprint. Well, they right? were taught too, right? They were taught too. And that's so the thing to remember is that our programming, what's the word? Programming. Leads to our thoughts, which leads to our feelings, which leads to our actions, which leads to our results. Now let me ask you something. Do you think it's possible, as a, a fairly rational, intelligent adult, that if you chose to, you could change your programming? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Really, I believe you could change your programming. <laughs> if you change your programming, you would also be changing your thoughts, thoughts which would change your feelings, which would change your actions, which would change your results. Okay. So, what's the definition of insanity? Same thing. Same thing. Different results. Exactly. So until you change your thoughts, are you always going to get the same result? Yeah. yeah. So how do you change your thoughts? By going back and changing your programming. programming. Instead of having the society program you, maybe it would be better if you programmed yourself. Maybe. And you chose what you're going to put inside that computer called your mind. Instead of letting everybody else decide what was going to go inside your mind. By the way. If, if your programming isn't serving you, then why do you keep it? I'm attached to it. Yeah, that's right. That's the devil. That's the devil, right? The devil, right? Well, yeah, our, our conditioned mind does not want change. They want it wants to protect you. It wants to protect you. It wants to protect you from change. So don't we all want to stay inside our comfort zone? Okay, so one of the first things that we all have to agree to is that from now on, our comfort zone is our death. That's right. If you're willing to stay inside your comfort zone, you can't possibly grow. How many would agree? In nature, isn't it true that you're either growing or you're dying? Uh -huh. yeah. Take a house plant. If it's not growing, what's it automatically doing? Dying. Yeah. If you're not growing, guess what you're automatically doing? Dying. You are. 
It's part of nature to be in growth mode. If you stay inside your comfort zone, and let's say most people want to be a level 10 person, they say it, but I would say most people are level one or two people. That's it. That's it. Okay. Until, you, until you're prepared to say, I'm sick and tired of being a level two person. In other words, anything between two and zero is inside your comfort zone. But if I ask you to do something, that's a level three challenge. So here's you, this is you, here's your challenge. Okay, so you have a level three challenge, you're a level two person, what's gonna happen? Not much. Now, is that level three challenge ever gonna become a level two challenge, level one challenge, or is a level three challenge is a level three challenge? Okay, the level three challenge isn't gonna change, what can change? You. You. Yeah, how do you change from being a level two person? Change your programming. You gotta, you gotta get outside your current comfort zone and grow into a level three person. True, or true. Yeah. Until you're prepared to get outside your comfort zone and do things level three people do that level two people won't do, you'll never be a level three person. Isn't that true? True. Raise your hand if you agree that's true. Now. Suppose you say, well, by the end of this year, I want to go from a level two to a level three. Okay, that's okay. And you say, and by the middle of next year, I want to go from level three to level four. And by the end of next year, I want to be at least a level five. And by the year after that, I want to be at least level seven. And within three or four years, I'm going to be a level 10 person. Okay? I mean, if you plant a lemon tree today, and you're not going to have a great big huge lemon tree with lots of lemons on it tomorrow, are you? No. It's going to take some time, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And guess what? For you to grow into that a level 10 person, it's not gonna happen overnight. But it can happen fairly quickly. It can happen very quickly if you really wanted to. So you need to understand the process of manifestation and you need to understand who's it up to if your programming is not empowering you and leading you to your successes. Who's it up to to reprogram yourself? Me, me. Yep. Where are you going to find the information you need to reprogram yourself? Right here, guys. Right here. Okay. okay, so if you guys don't have my book yet, I want for you to text the word. I wrote a book called Creating the Ultimate Entrepreneurial Mindset. And, if, and it's an e-book. If you don't have it yet, by all means, you should definitely get it. All you need to do is text the word blueprint to 855 576 2667. So just text the word blueprint because you all have a blueprint right now. And my, my goal in this book is to show you a step by step system. What's the word? Step by step, step, by step, step system. system. How many believe systems are the solution to everything? Well, see, I'm a big believer in systems. Tyre was a big believer. If you couldn't systemize it, he wasn't interested in it. He wanted something that if it worked, you could duplicate it again and again and again and again and again. Does that make sense? So everything to heart, if you couldn't create a system around it, he wasn't interested. Because he wanted to be able to take a good idea and, 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 and spread it out. You guys understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. If it's something that only you could do and no one else could do it and there was no one to duplicate it, he wasn't interested. He wanted to, and really, almost everything, if you break it down to the ridiculous, you can pretty much break down anything into something that highly motivated people can learn how to do. How many would agree? Right? Yeah. And that really, which which is more economical for you? Hiring highly skilled people or highly motivated people? The yeah. page is not found. Oh really? Okay, you know what? Oh, I'll, 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 I'll make sure that we get it fixed. Oh really? Eight by five, five, did, did anybody else want to get that? Yes. I got it. You got it? Everybody got it? Everybody else got it for you, Randy? I don't know. Man. What's that? Randy, I says page not number. Yours says page not found? Oh, yeah. Okay, all right, so you know what? I'll, I'll make sure we get that fixed. All right, okay. Technical stuff. I hate the technical stuff. All right. All right. It, 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 it's, it's 9 o'clock, and what I want to do is I really want to make sure that in the time that we have left, okay, guys, let, guys, later, guys, later. We'll, we can take care of it later. In the time we have left, I, I want to make sure that we cover this well file, and this well file is such an important one. It is, let me see what the, it is. Well, file number 14 on becoming an excellent money manager. And I would say that one of the things that all of us should hopefully agree 
is that money may not be the most important thing in our life, but it's right up there next to hair. How many would agree? Yeah. Right? I mean, and money is important in our society. How many would agree? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So unfortunately, most people, when it comes to their blueprint around money, who do you think they got trained in and their thoughts and their attitudes when it comes to money and business and rich people, where do you think most of their, their blueprint came from? Parents. Yeah, their parents, their, all, all this good, kind of good stuff here. And, and that would be great if your parents were very, very, very skillful in, in all the areas of money. They knew how to make a lot of money. I should say earn. I shouldn't say make. I, I catch myself whenever I do. We do not make money. Right, the U.S. Treasury makes money. We earn money. Say, I earn money. I earn, I earn money. money. Yeah. We earn money, and then we manage it. What do we do after we earn it? Manage yeah. it. And then we grow. Yeah. Now, how many would agree that the skills it takes to earn money are not the same skills it takes to manage it, and the skills it takes to manage it are not the same skills it takes to grow? How many would agree? All different skills. Yeah. Guess which ones you need to be good at. All of them. Guess how good you are at any of them right now. On the scale of one to 10, most people when it comes to earning money have a major challenge earning it. How many would agree? Yeah. yeah, they're not making as much money as they can take in every month. They wish. True, true. true. So most people, are, how many of you guys are making as much money as you'd like to be making? Raise your hand. How many would like to be making a lot more money than what you're making right now? Yeah, everybody. Absolutely, all right? Okay, so you know what? What if I said you could learn how to make a lot more money? Would you like to learn? Yes. Okay, is that important skills to have? Yes. Now, okay, I'm going to tell you that you absolutely positively, if you learn certain skill sets, and especially when it comes to systemizing marketing and sales. Systemizing marketing and sales. You get good at those three things, you will, I guarantee you, you will become very, very, very successful. And I, I would say marketing is at the top of the list, really. If you're great at marketing, what business can you get into? Mm. Yeah, because you're great at marketing. You know how to bring in lots of customers. Even if you're lousy at sales, if your marketing is good enough, you'll still close a good number. True, true. Sure. Right? I mean, marketing is everything. Do you think most people who get into business are good at marketing? Yeah. No. So most people don't know how to make or earn a lot of money. That's why I caught myself. Most people definitely don't know how to manage it because it doesn't matter how much money you earn. What matters is how much you have left after you paid all your bills every month. True, true. Right? I mean, which is better off, the person making $5,000 a month, but they're saving 1000 or the person making $10,000 a month and they're spending eleven? Who's better off? Right? So money management. Look, if you guys want to become financially free in the next couple of years, how many would like to become financially free? You have to commit. What's the word? Yeah. To becoming great at money management. Managing your money. Now, why do most people not manage their money well? Well, number one is they were they they don't they they were never taught how to, so they don't know what they're doing, right? And number two is it's like a hassle. Right? It's just so much easier. All the money comes into my checking account, all the money goes out from my checking account, and that's it. Right? They, they, they pay their bills every month, they don't actually do it. Well, how many believe that if you had the perfect system for managing your money, and you manage your money the right way, that it would open up all the other doors to your life? How many would like to have a system that actually creates that? So, it's in the book, Secrets of the Main Their Mind. We're going to talk about it in the time we have left. Because it's critically, critically, critically important that, that you begin to focus on it. Because what we focus on expands. Let me hear you say that. What we focus on expands. Say, what I focus on expands. What I focus on expands. Now, there's another expression. Where, where, focus, where focus goes, energy flows, and results show. So I want you guys to say that. Where, where focus, focus goes, goes energy flows, flows and results, results show. So if you really begin to focus in this one energy, and you start putting your energy into this one area, you know what's going to start seeing happening? You're going to start seeing results in those areas. If you focus on exercising for 90 days with a trainer, and they make sure you're going and you're working out every day, one day is your, you know, your aerobic day, another day is your leg day, whatever it is, if you focus and you put your energy into it for 90 days, do you think you would see results? Yes. yes. If you decided for the next 90 days, I'm going to learn how to play the piano. I'm going to, I'm going to pay, buy an online course, and I'm going to spend two hours every day playing the piano. 
And if you focus for two hours every day for 90, day, 90 days with the right instructor, do you think you'd see results in playing the piano? Yeah. Yeah. Playing golf? Yeah. Learning a language? Yeah. Where energy goes, I'm uh, sorry, where focus goes, energy flows, and results show. So where do you want more results in your life? Because if you want more results in your life in those areas, first thing is you need to focus on it, and then you need to start putting your energy into it, and then you start seeing the results. True or true? true. So if you want to become great at money management, you have to start putting some focus on it. You know how much time most people put on focusing on their money management throughout their day, week, month, year? For 99% of all the people? None. None. Zero. And then they wonder why they struggle with money. True or true? true. Right? That's the way it is. And, and it's, it's, it's pitiful because, you know, the universe, and we talk about it with the little kids and the ice cream. How many of you guys know the story? Yeah. So I don't, need to repeat, I don't need to repeat it. But, you know, most people are walking around with a scoop of ice cream on their cone. And that scoop of ice cream is just dripping all over their hand and all over their arm and all over the floor. And everybody's going out there saying to the universe, give me more, give me more. And the universe is looking at this sloppy mess that you got and saying, why, you can't even handle what you got. True, true. true. And until you can show the universe you can handle what you got, you won't get any more. You guys got that? How many understand what I just said? It's a spiritual law. Right? It's spiritual law. All right. So, what does Harv, what, what did Harv say? Harv said it is, <clears throat> you want to start looking at your money every single day, week, month, year, and develop new money management habits. It doesn't matter how much, as much as just developing the habit. It doesn't matter if you're using nickels and dimes because you're broke. You still have to get into the habit because when those nickels and dimes if you develop the right habits, we'll turn into fives and tens, and then fifties and hundreds, and then five hundreds and thousands. You guys understand what I'm talking about? Yeah. It's the habit that's the most important. How many understand what I just said? So it doesn't matter how much you're making right now, you still have to get into the habit. What's the word? Habit. It's a new program that you're gonna install in your mind to replace the current non, non-performing programs you've been using up until now. How many of you guys would like to become financially free? Is this a new revelation to you, or you've always wanted to be financially free? Why aren't you financially free now? You've had years to work at it. Huh? No, seriously, why, why, are, why, are, why are we not all financially free? It's not a new idea. Everybody wants to be financially free. Why aren't we? Because of our habits and our programming. Exactly. Thank you. And if the sooner you realize this, and the sooner you uh, you commit. To, to be aware throughout the day of how your current programming sabotages you and holds you back. Is there a better way for doing almost everything that you're currently doing? Yes. Is there a better way that you could, you could be managing your time, managing your money, doing what you're doing, reaching out to people? Is there, are there people out there that have better ideas than you? Yes. Yeah, and you should be open in a heartbeat if you find somebody who's got a better idea than you that you're gonna say, my idea is okay, your idea is great, screw my idea, I'm taking yours. How many times during the day could you learn from somebody an idea that you can incorporate and say, that's a good idea? You want to know something about ideas? They're a dime of. Yes. Yeah, everybody has great ideas. Right. It's not having great ideas, it's do you Follow do anything through. with them. Right? That's, this is where I want you guys to excel. This is where you separate yourself from the other 98%. Because the 98% are so mesmerized by the devil and have so many bad habits, of which one is called procrastination. What's the word? Procrastination. Raise your hand if you've ever procrastinated. Yeah, we all procrastinate, which is why it's so important to be part of a tribe, because if you feel yourself procrastinating, you get around the right people, they'll say, Tim, man. Screw up. Yeah, get on the horse, man, let's go. And no excuses, man, it's just a story you're buying from yourself. Right? True or true? true. Yeah. Sometimes that's all we need. If you have people in your corner that you know are supporting you and want you to do well, and they say, come on, Amy, it's time, let's do it, let's do it, you can do it. If you need any help, let me know. And you have a tribe of people that are encouraging you that way, and you're the same way to that person. How many people do you know you can count on that are there to encourage you, support you, and sometimes maybe even get in your face when they see you screwing up? Oh, yeah. do, do we all need to have those kinds of friends? Yes, yes. we do. Who will actually even, even get in your face and say, you're screwing up. Yeah, yeah. yeah we need to hear it. Do you think, uh, we may not like to hear it at the time, but at the end of the day, <laughs> is it the best thing for us? Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely, you bet. 
So, so Har said this. Yes, go ahead, Jonathan. Um, I, I just wanted to share that one of my biggest breakthroughs is with you being that person to me, and um, I was sharing the story with you, and you let me share it for right after you asked me uh, when does the same party stop, and that was a big breakthrough for me. So I just want to reiterate uh, what you just said about you need those people in your corner and in your life that are that you trust and love. Yeah, I, 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 you know, very when people come to me with a soft story, you know, oh, I lost my job, boy, oh, and, and, and so I, you know what? They're are they playing the role of the victim? Yeah. 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 Do they want someone to give them attention and say, oh, poor baby? <laughs> and, I, and that's why sometimes people don't like me, because what I'll, you know, they, and they come to me and I'll say, so what are you doing about it? This is how it is. Let's take emotion out of it. What are you doing to get yourself out of this mess? Or are you just going around crying to people about it? What are you doing about it? Because you can cry all you want and play the role of the victim. What do we learn as warriors? Do we get rid of our victim mentality? Yeah. yeah, we don't blame, justify, or complain. Do you think we want to surround ourselves with people that play the role of the victim? No, no. I want to turn, if someone's a wimp and they're a victim, mm -hmm. I want to say, turn into a freaking warrior. Don't cry and complain. What are you going to do about it? Well, people don't like to hear that. They want you to stroke them. Go ahead, Amy. So, uh, I'm going to sort of remind you, she has to read the scripture, but she has to do a really deep process where, um, I think we all sit up in God's little circle. We have an inner circle facing outward and an outward circle facing inward. And what you have to do is you have to, the person in front of you, you have to tell your story. So, whatever Jonathan told you, you have to tell it. But then the circle turns, and now you have to tell it again. And the circle keeps turning, and you keep telling your story until you're so sick of your own. Yes. But you don't like you're, 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 you're now being forced to tell it and you're being shut down and you realize like I don't even want to hear myself tell it again. Yeah. So sometimes what we do for Jonathan, you know, at first by letting him tell it is just beneficial. And sometimes if you actually encourage the person to tell it again, they, it becomes ridiculous. Like you know how we always say like break it down to ridiculous? Yep. And that's what she really did for us. And then the final thing that we did is we had to tell our story in Martian. And I know that sounds like really ridiculous. Yep. So you're basically at the very last, you're standing in front of this person and you're like, you know, like, it's not even English, you know, yeah. and, you're, and then everyone's just laughing because it's so absurd. <laughs> I love and it. Like, yeah, and by the time you're done, you're like, my story is so stupid. Yeah, and that's you've great. you've also had to listen to some other people's yeah. stories that you're like, wow, my story is nothing compared to that. And it just keeps turning. Oh, yeah. You know? And so you realize, like, my, my story is really, it's nonsense, and it's really just that. And then later on, if you get to know people really well, um, so they may need to ask for permission if they're kind of thin-skinned. But if you know someone really well and they start telling their story, you can interrupt them and just go, oh, let me And they'll, they'll catch themselves and yeah. stop that because yeah. it's not productive. No. And, and here, we all have a story. How many would agree? Oh, yeah. Everybody has a story, right? And, and we buy our story hook, line, and sinker. Right? Uh, you know, you, you, when you mention it, I used to see this cartoon where the dog is listening to the to the owner talking to it, and, and, and the owner saying, well, if you're a good doggy, then I'm gonna make sure you get to go for a walk. And, and after we go for a walk, I'm gonna give you a treat. So this is what the owner is saying, and, the, and this is what the dog is hearing. Blah, 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 walk. Blah, 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 blah treat, right? That's it. <laughs> that's it, that's all it is. They don't understand the rest of any of the, of any of the stuff. But, but they, they, they do understand a few words, right? But, but look, you know what? If you want, you know what, the best way to, to really separate yourself, see massive success, is to really surround yourself with the same like-minded people. How many would agree? And the thing is, is that we're not common. Most people out there are drifters. Napoleon Hill says 98%. I believe it's a much higher percentage than that. Of people that really are, are committed to becoming a level 10 people and, and understand the, the power of synergy, working together, collaborating, brainstorming together. And, and most people never get it. And, and we keep diverting. I want to make sure we get into the money management part. Harv said, I want for you guys to write this down. Write down these percentages. So the first thing Harv said is, if you're getting a paycheck, you're getting paid by other people, 
then you're getting taxes taken off at the source. How many would agree, right? Your employer takes off your taxes, all that stuff. But if you're a real estate investor or if you're a commission salesperson or something and it's not being taken off at the source, then what do you have to make sure you do every quarter? You gotta make sure that you're gonna take 20% of whatever your gross money is and put that aside to pay your taxes. Otherwise, when it comes time to pay your taxes, guess what? And you know how many people I know when it comes time to pay the taxes, the money isn't there to pay them? Why? Because they didn't have a system, what's the word? They didn't have a system that they followed to make sure that when it was time to pay the taxes, they had the money, true or true? Okay, do you not have to have a system? If you're not having your money taken off at source, then you need to make sure that you're taking 20% as a rule of thumb, and you're gonna set that aside to pay your taxes, okay. So everything else we're gonna talk about is in after-tax dollars. What kind of dollars? After-tax dollars. So let's say um, in your after-tax dollars, and we'll use $5,000 a month just for illustration purposes. So you're gonna take 10% of it, how much? 10%. And you're gonna put that into an account or a jar, uh, and we call it the FFA, which stands for your Financial Freedom Account. Now, you're gonna take 10% off the top. So when are you gonna take the 10%? Off the top. So you're gonna pay yourself first. How many of you think it's a good habit to get into to pay yourself first? Who's more important in this world than you? Nobody. Is the mortgage company more important than you? Yeah. Is the utility company? No, nobody's more important than you, so who gets paid first? I you. Do. Now, here's how most people do this. They say, you know what, I'll pay all my bills during the month, and whenever money's left over at the end of the month, I'll save. Except for one little problem, guess what's, over, guess what's left over at the end of the month? Nothing. Yeah, nothing. So, so, so the expression is, if you were to, if you were to say, well, I'm just gonna automatically take 10% off the top. Do you think after a while you would get used to living on the other 90%? Yes. Raise your hand if you would get used to living on 90% instead of 100%. So the expression is this, if you pay yourself first, you'll never miss it. If you pay yourself last, you'll never do it. You guys understand that? Okay, so guess what, guess what you're gonna do from now on? Pay myself first. You're pay yourself first. Now, you're gonna put this 10%, so if you were making $5,000, who knows what 10% of 5,000 is? And you're gonna put that into your financial freedom account and that money is to be invested. What's it to be done with it? Invested. Yeah. In, in assets that create passive income. What kind of income? Passive income. Yeah, because when do you get to become financially free? When you have what kind of income? Passive. And not passive income to pay for your desired lifestyle. True or true? True. So you're going to have an account set up intentionally so every month you have money that's being set aside to invest in something that creates what kind of income? Passive. Yeah, so like if, if uh, you know, let's say Corey, Corey's offering a program where if you want to invest in, in notes with him, he'll pay you a certain interest rate and he'll pay interest every month. Is that passive income? Yeah. Yeah, and if the interest rate's much higher than what you could get at the banks, is that good for everybody? Yeah. Okay, so you could take your $500 a month and find people like Corey and say, hey, I'm gonna invest it, and every month it's gonna pay me $50 interest. You know, that's a good return on my money. True or true? true. Am I doing any work? No, no, no. no I just wish I had 500,000, and I'm getting 10% on it, I'd be retired. True or true? true. Okay, that's all that, okay, so. Number one, passive income stream. And what's the attention, what's the expression? Where attention goes, energy flows, and the results show. So if the first account that you're putting money into every single month is, is in your financial freedom account, where are you putting your attention? Your financial freedom. Okay, well where attention goes, energy flows, and results show. How many of you guys want to become financially free? So now you have an account so that whether you like it or not, you've got money going in that, a, that account every single month that's not allowed to be spent. You only get to live off the income it generates. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you put more and more money into it, it's like fattening the golden goose. The bigger the golden goose gets, the bigger the golden eggs. Who wants golden eggs? Every month coming in right at you. Automatically deposit in your bank account. 
So your job is to create one great big huge golden goose or a whole bunch of small golden geese. What's the difference is, who cares as long as they're laying golden eggs, you get to keep those eggs. Sure, sure. What's our job? Our job is to create what? Golden eggs. Yes. No, we don't create the eggs. Our investments in our golden goose creates the eggs, right? I buy a rental property, I pay it off. Now I own this rental property free and clear. Every month, those, those golden eggs that come to me, am I doing any work for it? No. no. None. Well, I mean, like every once in a while, I got to have somebody repair something, whatever. But for the most part, is that passive income? Yes. yes. Yeah, absolutely. I own this business. I have a virtual assistant that takes care of everything. After I take care of her and pay those expenses, all the rest of it is my profit. I got to put an hour a day into it. So I, it's not totally passive, but is that is that another golden goose? Yes. Yeah. How many of you would like to have a bunch of golden geese? Yes. yes. Each bringing new income every single day, week, month, year. Good or good? Good. good. Okay, well, that's, that's, uh, so that's your financial freedom account. Now, we're not going to get through all the accounts today, but on the other side of your financial freedom account is something called your play account. What's it called? Play, play account. How many of you guys understand that we have two sides to our brain? Right, we have our left hemisphere, and one is much more logical, and much more and more is much more creative. How many would agree? Sure. Now, the logical side of our brain, which is our, our left side, tends to be more responsible. What are the, what should I do? What what are the things I need to take up? The 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 right hand the right hand side our right hemisphere is more creative. It's more playful. It's more like the kid inside of us. So, which side of the hemisphere do you think we need to take care of? Oh. Both. Okay. When we take 10% of our money and do the logical, respectable, mature thing to do and invest it for our future, we want to take an equal amount of money and say, let's play right now. Because who the heck knows that we're going to live long enough to enjoy that. True, true. true. So now, what are we doing? We're taking care of the adult inside of us by making sure we're investing for our future. And we're taking care of the kid in us because we're taking 10% of our money. So if you have five thousand dollars of after tax income, how much is that? Five hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. And with that five hundred dollars, you're gonna do something amazing with it. Maybe you're gonna go out to one of the lakes here and rent a beautiful yacht for an hour with four men that, that are, are, are manning the yacht. And you can bring four of your friends and they, there's a big bottle of Dom Perignon. It's only an hour, five hundred bucks. And you're gonna spend that hour just enjoying what I saw, a real treat. Or you're going you're gonna to go to Vegas for the weekend and just party it up, or whatever it is. And the rule is, you cannot go more than three months without spending all of it. So it's not to be saved up, it's to be spent. So that you are actually going out there and treating yourself to some fun. How many think that's a good idea? Yeah. Now again, where attention goes, energy flows and results show. How many of you agree that's true? So if, if you're having fun and you say, wow, this is so much fun, I'd like to do more of this, right? Well, the best way for me to do more of this is when I'm at work, get good at my work so I'll make more money so I can play more, right? And when you're working, you say, man, I love, I love to work because the more money I make, the more I get to play. Now, your left brain and your right brain are vibrating at the same frequency and it says, let's do it. When it's time to play, let's play. And when it's time to work, let's work. And we're 100%, as holistic people, we're 100% on board with what we're up to. Good or good? Yeah. Now, this is a money management system that automatically forces that to happen for you. Is that good or is that good? Yeah. I don't think that's a good idea. So the next thing is, is and I want to be careful for time here, is your education term. How many of you guys really, truly honestly believe that your education never ends? And if you really want to become a level 10 person in a world that's changing as rapidly as our world is changing, you've got to be willing to learn, unlearn, and relearn in a hurry. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. sure. What was true last year may or may not be true today and definitely won't be true next year. Sure, sure. 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 Everything is going obsolete so fast now it's crazy. Sure, sure. sure. And so if you're not willing to invest and you take 10% of your money, so again, if you have $5,000 of income, you're going to take 10%, that's $500 every single month, and you're gonna invest that in your in education job. Now, what does education include? What do you think it might include, Joey? Seminars, seminars, Yeah, yeah, seminars, masterminds, mentoring, coaching, 
you know, whatever it is, you're going to, you're, and again, where attention goes, energy flows and results show. So if you're going to be investing 10% of your income every month on your continuing education, mm -hmm. what's the likelihood you're going to keep growing as a person to that level 10 person? Good again. Yeah, because you, you budgeted it in your budget. Good again. Good. Okay. Now, so those are three of the critical components. Real quickly, because we're running out of time. A, a fourth one is 10% that you're going to do for your LTSS, which stands for long-term savings for the purposes of spending. So let me ask you guys something. What happens on December the 25th? Christmas. Okay, does it happen just this year or every year? Every year. Every year. Do you know how many people go into debt every single year buying Christmas presents? Yeah. It's staggering. What? Why wouldn't you save up for Christmas? You know it's coming. You know you're going to spend money. So why not take 10% of your money and constantly be setting it aside so that if you know you're going to be spending $2,000 at Christmas on gifts, when's the best time to start saving up for it? Yeah. yeah. You remember that old expression when we were kids growing up and when our parents said, you know, it's good to save? Who teaches that anymore? You know, it's still true. It's still true, right? We save up if you know you're going to be spending. Save up in advance for it. So LTSS. Or that 10% can be used to pay down debt that you currently have. How many think that might be a good idea? Right? So now you have a certain amount of your money. Because if your goal is, well, I'm going to take every extra penny I have, and I'm going to focus it on paying off all my debts. You know what you're going to get really good at? Paying off what? Yeah. Yeah. Debts. Guess what the universe is going to say? Oh, you're good at paying off debts. Get some more. more. Yeah. Get some more debt. <laughs> yeah. Instead of focusing on paying off more debts, how about saying, well, I'll pay off my debts. I'm going to focus on making more money, earning more money. Right. right. Then the universe says, oh, earning more money? Okay, I'll help you with that. What do you want? You want, you want, you, you want more paying off debts? No problem. I'll give you plenty of debts you're good at. <laughs> you, you, want to focus on, you want to focus on earning more money? No problem. No problem. Whatever you ask from the universe, that's what it'll deliver. True or true? True. Okay, so we've, we've talked about four. Um, what am I missing here? We've got... Uh, uh, Charity, give, well, giving. We, we have giving, and, and, and we, we have, we have um, first of all, we have what's called the necessities job. Yeah. So your mortgage, your insurance, your health club, all of that stuff there. You've got to make sure that, that you're going to take care of all of those expenses, right? So... It's either 50% of your of your income or 55%. So you can be between 50 to 55%. So in other words, if you're taking home $5,000 after taxes, your necessities can't be more than 2,500 bucks. The problem for most people is their necessities equal their entire income. They don't have time for anything else because they're living, actually, they're living above what their income says they should be living. And finally, depending on whether you put 50% or 55% into your necessities, the last 5 to 10% goes into your give job. Your give job. Why is it important for you to give? Giver's gain. Giver's gain. Is it important for you to give? Yeah. Why? How many heard the expression, the more you give, the more you get? Yeah. No. Is that, has that been your experience? The more you give, the more you get? Yeah. That hasn't always been my experience. No. And it hasn't really. Because sometimes I give and I don't get back. But you know what? You, what you're doing when you're giving is you're sending an energy out into the universe. True, true. Yeah. Especially if you're giving without expecting anything in return. Um, that, and by the way, if you're going to give, that's the only way to give. Every time you give, then never, ever, ever give anybody anything expecting anything in return. You're giving because it's your pleasure to give them something. You guys understand what I'm talking about? Now, if you sometimes if you don't have money, can you give up your time? Yeah. 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 Can you donate your old clothes or furniture or other things? So there's other ways that all of us can be giving. How many would agree? Yeah. I like to keep a, a big roll of five dollar bills, and then pretty much wherever I drive, there's almost almost all on the freeway. There's all these people. Hey, I'm out of work. Can you help me out? Whatever. I give them five bucks. Really, what I was thinking of doing is going to McDonald's and buying a bunch of five dollar food certificates and giving them that. You know, I guess they could sell it if they wanted to, but more than likely. And I know McDonald's isn't the best food in the world, but I figure five bucks will get them a meal. And they may be using that five bucks to buy drugs. What they do with it, it's not me. I give because I'm a generous giving person. 
Why do you give? Because you are a generous giving person. Not because the person who's receiving it is worthy of it or what they're going to do with it. That's not why you're giving it to them. You hope they're going to use that money for a meal or for helping them find a place to live. But that's not your choice. That's their life. But can, can you constantly be, be who you are? Yeah, absolutely, right? So that, that's how you want to be. So if you use that money management system, you're going to be focusing on all these areas. And I promise you that if you set it up properly and you start breaking down your money every single pay period and make sure that you have even separate accounts, Harv actually goes into detail on how to set up your accounts, it's a game changer. And, and, and what we focus on expands, how many would agree? Yeah. So what are we focusing on with this money management system? We're mm -hmm. focusing on being responsible, we're focusing on having fun, we're focusing on creating passive income streams, we're focusing on our education, we're focusing on taking care of our necessities, we're focusing on giving, we're focusing on saving for our future expenses. Those are the most important things. If you focus on those things and you manage your money that way, you know what kind of results you're gonna get? Phenomenal. And again, the most important thing is to develop the habit. What's the word, guys? Habit. Come on, you guys are asleep. What's the word? Habit. Habit. Thank you. Habit of managing your money. So, I want everybody to please stand up. Woo! Okay, and put your hand on your heart. And let's do the declaration all together. I am an excellent money manager. I am an excellent money manager. Again, please. I am an excellent money manager. Okay, one more time, twice as loud. I am an excellent money manager. Okay, turn to three of your neighbors, look them in the eye, give them a high five, say, you have a million in their mind. Oh, All right, Man, you have a million in their mind, buddy. All right, we're gonna say goodbye to everybody in Facebook land. Thank you guys so much for showing up. I'll read all your comments afterwards. Thank you again. Let's give it up.